Our final award tonight, so one of our final awards, we'll go to hall, our second Hall of Fame award, we'll go uh, to Dennis Happel, who's been a longtime builder of this community, has helped so many different projects and led so many different projects. And to present that award will be Stacey Malakowski, the Chief Financial Officer of Arbig. And uh, Stacey, come on up. so this takes approximately three minutes and 22 seconds. But had I known I was introducing and presenting someone who is Jesus-like, I would have added more. So I got a call from Dennis, and he asked me about presenting him for this Hall of Fame award. And in true Dennis fashion, he said, yeah, we present me, and uh, don't spend any time saying a bunch of nice crap about me. He said, when you're up there and you have a mic, never waste a moment. So Dennis, that is my goal. Tonight, I'm going to try to not waste a moment with the mic. I'm going to do that by sharing a very short excerpt, approximately three minutes, from a book I recently read called The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Our lives are finite, but life is infinite. We are all the finite players in the infinite game of life. We come and go, we're born and we die. And life still continues with or without us. There are other players, some are our rivals. We enjoy wins and we suffer losses, but we can always keep playing tomorrow until we run out of the ability to stay in the game. And no matter how much money we make, no matter how much power we accumulate, no matter how many promotions were given, none of us will ever be declared the winner of life. In any other game, we get two choices. We do not get to choose the rules of the game. We do get to choose if we want to play, and we get to choose how we want to play. The game of life is a little different. In this game, we only get one choice. Once we're born, we're players. The only choice we get is if we want to play with a finite mindset or with an infinite mindset. If we choose to live our lives with a finite mindset, it means we make our primary purpose to get richer or to promote faster than others. To live our lives with an infinite mindset means that we are driven to advance a cause bigger than ourselves. We see those who share our vision as partners in the cause, and we work to build trusting relationships with them so that we may advance the common good together. We're grateful for the success we enjoy as we advance. We work to help those around us rise. To live our lives with the infinite mindset is to live a life of service. Right, Mary? To live a life with a finite mindset means to think about the second and third order effects of our decisions. And like all infinite games, in the game of life, the goal is not to win, it is to perpetuate the game. To live a life of service. None of us want on our tombstone the last balance in our bank account. We want to be remembered for what we did for others. To serve is for the good of the game. We only get one choice in the game of life. What will you choose? By Simon Sinek. Clearly Dennis has shown, chosen to live an infinite mindset. The second and third order effects of the contributions that he has made are perpetuating our community towards greatness. Tonight, I ask you to live your life like Dennis, with an infinite mindset. Find your passion and talents to serve others, to continue to learn, to mentor, to volunteer, to donate, and then to donate just a little bit more. To teach, 
and to pray and to raise your kids to become servants as well and to be humble. For if we all do these things, we shall live our community a better place than we found it. Dennis, I hope that I have made my time at the mic count and that you like my speech. <laughs> And now Dennis has no idea, but he's not getting the microphone. <laughs> because we have a, a little surprise for you, Dennis. Oh, no. I would like to welcome uh, to the stage Allison Kyle and Chuck Hopius. We have a little bit of something something for you. Surprise. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Allison Kyle. I am the current chairperson for the Pernhaus School District. Tonight, we are honoring Dennis for his service on the hospital district as our official attorney. So back in 1977, before I was born, <laughs> Dennis Apple became the attorney of the Pernhaus School District. And for the next four decades, he would be a valuable member of the Perk Health team. The expectations was to provide legal counsel for the district, but in Dennis's devotion to the entire community, he had a, a better, he, was, he thinks the community needed more. So with his strong, reliable, viable, or I'm sorry, he wanted us to have a strong, reliable, and viable healthcare system, so that set him apart from being just an attorney. Dennis was instrumental in the physician recruitment over the years. I have been told, because again, I was only in middle school at this time, <laughs> the best example was when he put a group of people together to fly to La Crosse, Wisconsin to recruit a young new surgeon at a much needed time for the hospital as we were financially struggling. The up and coming surgeon from Southern California, Dr. Rand Stoley, was convinced to come to Perm in 1982 and is still here today. Dennis was a safeguard in our management agreement negotiations with Sanford Health and its predecessors, making sure that the district and the community's best interests were at the forefront of every discussion and negotiation. Dennis was the force behind the major gift committee that raised $3.5 million to help build our new hospital and clinic. In true Dennis fashion, he saw something that needed to be done to better the community, and he achieved it. Most recently, he set out to raise money so there could be a water therapy pool included in the PAC expansion, another way of furthering the healthcare services in Perm, as many of you have probably talked to him recently. <laughs> it is Dennis's perseverance and aspirations that the Perm community be the pride of West Central Minnesota. It is the determination he provided during the 43 years of service to the Perm Hospital District that was left a mark on our success. This past year, Dennis retired as the Hospital District's attorney. On behalf of the Perm Hospital Board of Trustees and all of our 600 employees, we present you with a token of appreciation for your part in planning to make Perm Health what it is today. We are grateful for your passion, dedication, professionalism, and hometown philosophy in helping make Perm Health, Perm Living, and the Perm Community a great place to work, live, and play. Thank you, Dennis. share a little quick story. So I didn't grow, grow, grow up in Perm, but my parents are originally from here, and Dennis knows my dad. I met Dennis about 14 years ago when I joined the Perm Health Board. We had to do a trip to Sioux Falls to tour uh, Sanford when we were doing the negotiations. And I've all heard about Dennis. Dennis happened to be attorney. There's nothing like standing in downtown Sioux Falls on the corner, walking back from a liquor store. <laughs> Talking about the boys' basketball game that was playing to go to state, and I'm going, hmm, I wonder why everybody thinks Dennis is so, I don't know. He was 
is just fun. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. We have a little gift for Dennis as he retires. And his friends picked it out for us because we weren't sure what to get him. But they tell us his jacket is in the three cup shape. <laughs> It's just been substantial that Perm has done. 
either to business expansion, new business, retail, the hospital, the schools, the community center. It's really, really been an amazing run for a small company. So how does this happen? Well, for one thing, we have good bones here. Lakes, good farms, the railroad, which is a love hate relationship, but it's good. <laughs> and then all the obvious things, we have good people, everybody talks about that. Hardworking, they're proud, really proud of our community. Creative, really giving. But there's so many unsung stories. So many things that kind of fade into the fabric of our community. I'm going to give you one example. A bunch of years ago, Tuffies needed to expand. And they went to the city, and the city had to make a decision for them. It was when they held the meeting at the old library. It was standing room only. People were madder than a SOB. There wasn't one person there in favor of doing this. Worst meeting I think I've ever been into. They, they said a lot of bad things to the council and to the mayor. Arnie Kohler, who was in, Ernie Kohler, who was in our Hall of Fame. And I remember saying to myself, boy, am I glad I'm not on council. I'm not going to do that. But here's Ernie, strong, silent, nice guy. He points to the crowd, his friends, his neighbors, his fellow citizens, and said, we need to do this. This is going to be good for Peru. And that decision was to close the street by the post office. You would think that it was the end of the world for those people. <laughs> and it was at that time. It was everybody from the morning. But I can tell you, I don't know exactly what would have happened if they didn't close that street, but I promise you Perm wouldn't be the same as it is today. It wouldn't be a hundred million dollar plus factory sitting there. Courage and vision are two huge components that I can guarantee you has happened thousands of times in the history of Perm, and that was one great example. Of course, you can't get an award like this without good support from your family. Joan is from here, too. She's gotten some volunteer awards herself, served on the school board, always shared in the vision. Her dad, Al Schoenberger, he's in the Hall of Fame. Very progressive guy before us that came here. You need good employees, as you've talked about, good partners. I've had good partners to help me do some of these things. Dean, Joel, Terry, my good friend, Jimmy Osterfeld, passed away. That's what you need. But I have often said that working in firm here for me is like being the CEO of the town. But it's with about 100, 150 other CEOs, all doing their own leadership thing, all doing what they do best with a great passion. And it starts at the top. KLN and the Nelson family, Arvigs and the Arvigs family, building their businesses, setting an example, donating, and the rest of the community shares that vision and it trickles on down. So nobody alone can do this. Even a few people, a bunch of people couldn't do this without the community really sharing that vision. So, all I can say is this award is for everybody in this room, for the people that aren't here that work on stuff, the people that came before us. So let's all celebrate it, pat ourselves on the back. Every year this event is kind of a love fest for Perm, and it should be. So keep doing what we do. Our motto is Perm makes it happen, so let's keep doing that. Thank you for the award. Thanks for the jacket.